I want to talk about the movement first. And I noticed this last night, and um, it came up again. There's something really freeing about seeing movement that I'm, I may know or have seen, and seeing it out of its usual context. I feel like I'm not getting caught up in this nostalgia of it. I'm not like, oh, look at their hair, or getting all feeling precious and wondering who it was. I feel like I'm getting, when I see the movement um, disentangled from maybe its, its uh, usual sort of structure and the music, that I'm able to see its form. So was that your intention? Can you talk a little bit about that, that choice to just um, show us this movement in a different way? I uh, am attracted to form, whatever the hell that means. Um, I'm very visual. And so uh, the forms of the bodies in these iconic um, idioms uh, are in incredibly interesting to me. They're also very different from the kind of forms that my body um, inhabits because of the kind of training. Um, I've, I've been allowed to have a lot of freedom in the way I move um, from a young age. So um, I was sort of um, compelled by the hyperlegibility uh, and, and uh, like carving and or painting of the bodies in these in these forms, and I wanted to try them on, and I wanted to try them on with people who had a complex relationship um, to those forms, just because their bodies um, in in 2018 are are inevitably, inevitably complex. They're not people are not just dancing for one person. So there's these mutt bodies. And so uh, it's less that I was trying to say, don't look at the originals, mm -hmm. look at us, mm -hmm. is sort of more like this is in us in some mm -hmm. way, and this is in you and in us in a, in a com as a community in some way, and can we look at them in a different way, and does that allow us to think about other things um, and see them differently and see other things? that might be caught up in them. You know, in thinking about all the, the movements that you have tried on, all the um, ways that you have interacted with this material, are you closer to the knowledge and movement question? Because it's, I mean, the reason we, you know, movement is, is essentially abstract, but uh, what do you think? What do you think? Everything that you try really hard to do and you care about informs you and you know more about yourself through that endeavor. Um, I, don't, uh, I don't think that these forms you know, are more important or imbue more knowledge in my body than other forms that I've um, inhabited. But I think, I think the question is sort of like, the the question is sort of about the gap between the kind of knowledge that a body has and mm. that the sediments and the geology and the material and the emotional and mental sort of all that all that mix up together that a dancing body does that kind of unnameable you know knowledge and it's perhaps it's distance from language or mm. different kinds of ways that we land meaning or understand you know. Well, well, speaking of language, let's move on to the, the language component. So I'm just dying to know what the email said to the scholars. I would love to get an email like that. So I, I, would, I wanna know um, what, um, how open-ended um, uh, the question was to the, in the essay or what kind of um, restrictions there were when you uh, invited these people to, uh, these wonderful scholars and to write these, these pieces. It was different with each person. There was one person, Carol, who's here, who got an email um, from Pam Taji, the director of The Pillow. <laughs> On behalf of The Pillow, we would like to. Um, <laughs> so that was a relationship that, was, um, that started, Carol's at Williams, and um, that was a relationship that was started in sort of a little bit more, I didn't know Carol at all, and um, I read, uh, I snooped around online to see what kind of classes she teaches and what she's interested in, what books she's written, and I thought um, she might be interested, so. I didn't know her. Um, Tommy, I knew of and I knew and I admired and I knew that, um, that Tommy knew a lot about 
Ailey and Revelations and had written a book about it. And I wanted to just share the project with him and get his feedback and hear what he thought. And he sort of said, I would love to be part of this. And that was a long time ago. And there was a lot of years where I was like, is this going to really happen? <laughs> and um, it amazingly did. And uh, yeah, so and then, you know, I, I, it, it, at some point I started, I started thinking, what kind of conversations I want to have with the original works, and then I would look for scholars who um, might be in those disciplines. Um, and one person was recommended to me by a friend. There's, I mean, something magical needs to happen where a, somebody in academia agrees to spend time with me in a studio and then perform and tour. I mean, that is not... <laughs> At all, at, at an everyday at all, thing. At all, yeah. at all, to be taken for granted. Yeah. And a lot of people in academia, they, you know, they do their thing. They have their tenure. They write about what they write. They teach about what they. They repeat their classes and da da. And the, and then there's maybe they're interdisciplinary in some way. But this this project requires people to really care about different kinds of knowledge, and to want to implicate their bodies in this diff very different kind of space and to be vulnerable. Um, so it's been just kind of, it just feels like magic, the kind of people that have come together. Well, each, each um, paramodernity is so, um, you, it's almost like a little world of its own. Um, and the way the scholar is positioned, the way they're taking the stage or sharing the stage, invading the sp stage is, is unique. Can you talk a little bit about the process of putting the two things together. Because that to me is, and I'm going to use your, your words, the magic and meat of this project. So um, how did that go? It was actually the work of my, uh, the skill that I do have, which is to make dances. And so that I think um, entails just me looking at what's happening in the room, the mm. energy of this person's body, um, what I see that they want to do, what they can do, um, rather than thinking about, uh, you know, just what it should be, but seeing what's there and what emerges and what kind of um, contribution their physical presence could have to the to what we're talking about. So, and then and then there's also the structure of the essay and the structure of the of the movement and and how to make space for those things. And it, it's it's very interesting. It's just about kind of for me. It's been about listening mm. to what's in the room and what's coming up, and what are all the people bringing up that makes in the end decides what this nucleus is going to, what kind of shape it's going to have. One thing that surprised me, having seen all of them, is um, the emotional content of um, really each piece has its own kind of like a, I called it a curveball, a twist to it. Um, uh, a heart to it that is is quite wrenching. Um, when I, you know, if you just maybe read a little blurb about paramodernities, you might think this is like a dance history nerd fest, and you know, it's not. It, it's it's way more than that. You know, it just you know, and um, that that really uh, that would surprised me, and I wonder, and, and it's it's beautiful, and it, what it's what makes this project. Um, so much more than uh, a deconstruction of a dance with a, sc a scholar. Um, so do, can you talk a little well, bit it, about some of those elements? You're saying dance history nerd fest. And to me, it's immediately like, I mean, this is our passion. This is our life. This is everything. Every, my whole life is filtered through this dancing body. So for all of us here, this it can't not it can't be something heady. I mean, it's just it can't. It, it's 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 like it's filled with everything that our lives are filled with, and dance history is filled with all these things. We did not make them make them up. They're there, right? So yeah. hi history is sort of this sort of like you know crystallized version of a story of what was, but. It, there's all the, the meat. Right, right. I thought that they're like little cocktails to me. Um, how did you decide on the groupings of, of each program? I think that they could all go in any order, except that Mark is also in Cunningham, and, and I'm also, so there was, a, there was a logistical and boring reasons why we couldn't do other orders. Okay. The idea of the project that there's not a hierarchy, there's not a chronology, there's not a, a, a you know, this person birthed this person, and you know, Cunningham came out of Graham's company, and we should see them in that order. Um, it's not at all that. It's, it's a cocktail, and it can be a different cocktail every night, theoretically. Is this a personal 
a, a pursuit of yours, or do you hope to educate um, audiences on? It, I think that um, it is, for me, something personal as a maker. It's also something, uh, an offering for the dance community, things to chew on, things to talk about. And it also touches on the sort of hermeticism and, and the desire for dance to be mm, part of a larger conversation for more people and to be acknowledged as part of history, art history, what, you know, whatever, um, for many more people. So I think that it depends who you are when you come to this. If you're a dance nerd and you've danced, what if you dance one of these pieces? It's very different from if you're somebody who doesn't know anything about it. Faces and hands define the distance between here and nows and between us. We look at parts of a body instead of the whole. We touch a screen instead of skin. These are bodies full of power and violence and desire. But a spectacle, not as being. It's a celebration or fetish of distance. We touch a button and the world disappears. And so do we.